Um, another favorite reaction of mine here has to do with aluminum and iron oxide here. Aluminum and iron oxide. Let me show you this reaction here. Um, here is um, doo -doo -doo. aluminum solid plus Fe2O3 solid gives us Al2O3 liquid plus Fe liquid. And we throw in our oxidation numbers in on this here. This is a plus 3 minus 2 plus 3 minus 2. Here's an element all by itself. Its charge, excuse me, its oxidation number is, is 0. And here's aluminum. Its oxidation number is 0. Okay. Now, in this reaction, what's been oxidized, what's been reduced? As we look at this, we can see here aluminum, its charge goes up, and iron, its charge goes down. So we would say here that our iron, our iron is going to gain three electrons as it goes here. See, so it goes from a plus three to a zero, so it added three negative charges. Our aluminum over here, it's going to lose three electrons. It's going to lose three electrons because it goes from a zero to a plus three. So the iron, we saw that its charge went down. If its charge went down, we would say it's been reduced. Iron's been reduced. Aluminum is the other thing that's been oxidized. It's been oxidized. Now, these things on the other side of the equation, they have their own special names as well. And so whatever's been reduced here, on the opposite side here, we would call this the opposite thing. So if it's reduced on this side, on this side, the opposite thing is we will call this the oxidizing, oxidizing agent. And then this here, the aluminum, it was oxidized here. So on this side, we will call this the reducing agent. Reducing agent. These are just names, just names that we assign to these things. Now, in this reaction, we can break it down into its individual elements and look at what we call the half reaction. So the half reaction is just looking at the individual parts. So for this reaction, we would say that the oxidation half reaction, the oxidation half reaction, we're going to look at what's been oxidized here, and that's going to be our aluminum. So we have two aluminums. Did I balance that equation there? I don't think I did, did I? I need to put a two here and a two over there. Okay. Okay. So, all right. So two aluminums, our aluminums over here, our aluminums become aluminum oxide plus six electrons. That is to say we have two aluminums here. Charge is, the oxidation number is zero. Here it's plus three. Here's it's a minus two. To go from here to here, we had to lose six electrons. Each aluminum lost three. So that's why we end up with six over here. So that's the oxidation half reaction. The reduction half reaction 
is going to be the opposite. This is going to be our iron. So with our iron, we have Fe2O3 and six electrons becomes two Fe solid on this side. Well, liquid. Liquid on this side. Uh, oxidation number is zero. Oxidation number over here is plus three minus two. So each iron atom loses three electrons. There's two of them, which gives us a total of six. Question. Um, okay, so why is this minus six instead of maybe, or why is this plus six instead of minus six? Okay. Yeah, okay, so electrons have a minus charge, correct. And this here starts at zero. It has lost, each one has lost three electrons, and there's two of them, so two times three is six, so there's six electrons with a negative charge that are apart. They've, they've left here. They've left and gone somewhere else. Where they've gone is over to here. So if we were to add these together, if we were to add these two half reactions together, our electrons, if we just kind of imagine this is an equal sign, this is an equal sign, you've got electrons, six electrons, six electrons on opposite sides, these should cancel out like this, and then we'd be left with our original equation. Okay, it's just trying to show that six electrons went from one side to the other, is all. The Gustav gun was an artillery piece in World War II that the Germans developed, and it scared the bejesus out of the Allies. I don't know if you can see there's actually a person standing on the gun way up there. And a seven-ton shell, this is the mass of a semi-truck, unloaded, but the mass of a semi-truck, and it could shoot it accurately 23 miles. So if you had this in Duluth, you could accurately hit targets in two harbors, Cloquet, South Superior, 20-some miles away. Scary, scary, scary. Now, as it turned out, yes? Um, this one, I don't think it exploded. Um, well, it did sort of in that the Allies bombed the snot out of it. Um, th the thing is, is it ran on railroad tracks. You had to have two sets of railroad tracks, and from the air, the Allies could look down and they could see two sets of you know, railroad tracks running in parallel. They could find where the gun was, and then they made it a, a big-time target because they were scared of this thing, and they bombed it into the ground. Um, so it did actually get destroyed um, by bombing it from the air. Now, military commandos do carry, demolition teams, thermite grenades. And the reason you might use something like this is, say you have to retreat and you have to leave an artillery piece or a tank or something, big piece of equipment behind, you need to destroy it so the enemy can't use it. You take a thermite grenade, drop it in there, and it will destroy it. It'll melt right through it and make it inoperable. A more practical use of thermite is in the um, railroad uh, business. When they have railroad, um, what do they call the steel things that the train, the tracks. Yeah. So you, they want to weld them together, but you don't want to carry welding equipment way out into the boonies across the tracks. What they'll do then is they can use thermite to melt the two pieces of track together out there. Right, so that's what thermite is. Oh, the reaction, it's aluminum plus iron oxide. Aluminum powder plus rust. That's thermite, yeah. And so it will not spontaneously go off. And I've tried this using a blowtorch, and even a blowtorch won't start. It has a very high activation energy. But 
We're going to try it Friday in class. Like spontaneously combust, <laughs> right? I hope not. Um, so it takes a lot of energy to get this started. But once it gets started, by golly, um, it gets pretty exciting. So I'll just move some of these things out of the way. I have some magic sauce here um, to get it going. And I'm just going to take a little bit of my magic sauce here, put that in there. Okay, a little bit of that there. There we go. Measuring very carefully. That looks good. Okay. And this doesn't always work. I'm just trying to set this up just in case we have failure here. Um, but it's usually pretty good. Usually, you know, if it works, it's pretty exciting. Now, um, if you have a cell phone, you want to film this, you just put it on video mode. Okay. You get this set, get this ready. I'll give you a, a, some advanced warning here. And okay. Move some things out of the way here. Okay. Ah, all right. Magic sauce. Okay, are we ready? Well, I mean, we could dim the lights because it'll, it'll look really cool. Just some some people's phones, the, you know, the the video quality is not the best if the light is dim. But yeah, good, good, okay. Is that all right? Is that okay? All right, okay. It worked! <laughs>